Have you ever thought about how an ambulance sounds higher to you when it approaches you, when it's driving towards you, but sounds lower when it drives away from you? And I don't mean how loud it is. I mean the sound that it makes. When it comes towards you, you hear this meemo, meemo. And when it drives away from you, you hear this meemo, meemo. Have you ever stopped to think, what is going on? This is not magic. This is not your ears playing tricks on you. This is the Doppler effect. It's science. Remember, sound waves are created by the vibration. In a particular medium like air or water, sounds along a longitudinal wave and they move, they propagate through the medium. So here you can see a little sound source, so maybe an, a siren or a school bell or something like that. And here we can see the various waves that are emitted. This one is the first wave that's emitted, the one that's furthest away from the source. And then this is the second wave that's emitted and the third wave, the most recent wave that's emitted. And the waves are continuously emitted as the sound is making, the source is making a sound. Now you should remember this formula from grade 10. We can use this formula to help us calculate one of these three variables. Remember, this V is the speed of sound measured in meters per second. Now usually in the Doppler effect, we give you this variable over here, and it's usually around 340 meters per second, although this can vary depending on where you are. F, as you should recall, is frequency and frequency is measured in hertz. Now, you need to remember, and I hope you do, that frequency is related to pitch. So the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. And the lower the frequency, the lower the pitch. Frequency and pitch are directly proportional. And then we have this variable over here, which is wavelength. And in our formula, wavelength is measured in meters. So wavelength represents the distance between the different wave crests. So for example, this distance over here would be the wavelength, let's call it X. This distance over here would be the wavelength, let's call it X, and so on. Okay, so that's the wavelength. One important thing for you to remember to understand the concept of the Doppler effect is the bigger my frequency, so the bigger I make frequency, the smaller my wavelength goes. Because V is constant, the speed of sound in air, we're going to take as a constant. Constant. So if your question tells you that the speed of sound is 340 meters per second, it's going to stay 340 meters per second for the question. So the bigger the frequency, the smaller the wavelength, and the smaller the frequency, the bigger the wavelength, this sort of relationship is known as an inversely proportional relationship. So I know my drawings are a little bit wonky, but I hope you can see that. Remember the distance between these crests. So this distance here, I'm writing it in purple, is the wavelength. So sound source number one has a much smaller wavelength than sound source number two. Look at this wavelength. This one compared to this tiny little one over here. So this is a big, sound source two has a big wavelength. And what you can conclude based on that is that sound source one will have a large frequency and sound source two will have a small frequency. So it's just very important to understand the inversely proportional relationship. Now, what does this got to do with the Doppler effect? Let's go back to a situation where I have a sound source emitting a sound wave like this. So pretend you, this is you, you're standing on the side of the street. You are the listener. Another word for listener is observer. This is you. And this is a parked, let's say, police car. And the siren is going off. These waves are being emitted and they will eventually reach your ears. Okay, now what I need you to understand about this situation is that the parked car is parked, it's not moving, and you are stationary, you are not moving. What that means in this particular scenario is that there's no Doppler effect occurring. The reason why is because there's no relative movement between the source, the police car, which is over here, and the listener or the observer, you. There's no relative motion or movement. What that means is that if the source is producing a frequency, let's say of 100 hertz, I'm making up a number, frequency of the source is 100 hertz. If there's a person sitting inside that car, that person will also hear a frequency of 100 hertz. So the observed frequency, the heard frequency by the person sitting inside the car will be the same. And the frequency heard or observed by you standing all the way over here, frequency of the listener, you will also observe a frequency of 100 hertz. Again, because there's no motion between the source and the observer or the listener. But something interesting happens when one of these two things move. In this scenario now, I'm going to make the source move towards the observer and take a look at what happens over here. Can you see what is happening to these sound waves here in front as it is approaching the observer? Let me show you again. Can you see how these waves are compressed over here in the front as it approaches the observer? 
So in that particular scenario, the source is moving towards the listener. And as you can see, the wavelengths over here in front of the source, because the source is moving towards the listener, becomes compressed. The wavelengths decrease. And what do you remember that happens when the wavelength goes down? What happens to frequency? Frequency goes up because frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. So wavelength decreases, frequency increases, and higher frequency means higher pitch. So this is essentially what is happening. And that is why the stationary listener observes a higher frequency than what is actually emitted from the source. Remember, the frequency of the source could be, let's stick with 100 hertz. But because it's moving towards the listener, the listener will observe a higher frequency, 120 hertz, let's just say, for example. What about when the source moves away from the observer? As the source moves away from the observer, you can see what's happening here at the back. When the source moves away, you can see that the wavelengths over here increase, it stretches out. Wavelength increases, which means that frequency, the observed frequency that this little listener over here, what he perceives, what he hears, that frequency decreases, which means that pitch decreases. And that's why when the ambulance moves away from you, you hear this meh, 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 meh sort of noise instead of the meh, meh, the high pitch noise. The Doppler effect also works if the source is stationary and the listener moves. So let's pretend you're at a party, the, the speaker over here is stationary and it's making a lot of noise. If you, the listener, if you move towards the source, then what happens is take a look at these sound waves over here, these black rings, these lines. The faster you move, the faster or the more of these black lines you pass per second. The more wave crests you pass per second. What that means is that your wavelength, the, the wavelengths that you perceive will decrease. So the observed frequency will be bigger than the frequency that is emitted by the source. So if the frequency of the source, let's say is 50 hertz, and you are walking towards the speaker, the frequency observed by you, the listener, will be higher. Let's pretend 75 hertz. It all also depends on the speed with which you are walking. And over here, stationary source, you, the listener, the observer, you're walking away from the source, you will observe less wave crests per second. Therefore, the observed frequency will be lower than what is emitted by the speaker. So let's say the speaker emits a frequency of 50, you might observe a frequency of 30. You're walking away from the source. And all of this is the Doppler effect. So the Doppler effect, the official definition that you need to know according to exam guidelines is the Doppler effect is a change in frequency or pitch of the sound detected by the listener because the sound source, the thing that's making the sound, and the listener have different velocities relative to the medium of sound propagation. And in our curriculum, yes, you do have to give the definition word for word. This comes from the exam guidelines. This is everything that you need to know for the Doppler effect. And the exact definition, as I gave it to you now, is in the exam guidelines. Doppler effect has lots of different applications, which we will look at. Here are some of the applications. The Doppler effect can also be observed in light waves, and we will cover this in more detail in another video. So as I mentioned, this is my one formula that could come up in the section. Speed of sound in air is usually given to you, usually given depending on the question, and it's around 340 meters per second as we discussed. Other formulas that you might need to use that pop up, frequency is equal to one over period, and period is equal to one over frequency. And then we get the new formula, the Doppler effect formula, which is this one over here. And I'm going to discuss this formula, how to use it and what everything here means. So here's the formula, and I'll also get to figuring out how to use the signs. So as you can see in the Doppler effect formula, we have a plus minus over here and a plus minus over here. Now, your standard formula, the one that you are always going to write down first, as it appears on the formula sheets, will be this formula up here. You will write it exactly as given, and when we substitute values in, when you put numbers in, then you are going to use this over here to figure out what signs need to go into the formula. So for example, must I put a plus at the top, or must I put a minus at the top, or vice versa? Okay, so what do the different things in the formulas mean? We've spoken about this briefly, but if I'll this, means frequency observed by listener. Remember, another word for listener is observer, the person who is listening. This is the frequency observed by the listener. And then FS is the frequency produced by the source, the thing that is making the sound. V 
is the speed of sound. And I said, yeah, it's usually given. Remember, I said it's usually 340. So this is 340 and this is 340. And just because they are both 340 doesn't mean that you can cancel them out. Absolutely not. Because of this plus minus over here, you need to remember to do your algebra properly. And then last but not least, VL is velocity of the listener or speed of the listener. And VS is velocity of the source or speed of the source. Now, when we do questions, either the listener or the source will be stationary, which means they will not be moving. So if the listener is moving, then VS will be zero. Okay. If the source is moving, like an ambulance moving and it's making a noise, then the listener will be stationary. So VL will be zero. So either VL or VS will be zero. Now, what does my diagram mean? What do I mean how to figure out signs? Just remember that your teacher would have taught you this in a different way, maybe. You might have tables to remember this. This is just my method, so I hope it works for you, but otherwise you can use the method that you were taught. So, remember I mentioned that in your Doppler effect formula over here, you are either going to put a plus at the top or a minus at the top when you substitute in. And same thing here. This is either going to be a plus or a minus. Which sign we use depends on who is moving. Now, I use this diagram over here. I write an L on the left-hand side, so L for left-hand side, and an S over here. It's also alphabetical order. L and then S, always. Listener and source. Then, to the right, to the right, that way, I draw a plus sign. To the left, I draw a minus sign. And how I remember that is because if you are going to the right, think about a number line. If you go to the right, you are adding. If you go to the left, you are minusing. Now, what does this diagram mean? Say, for example, in my particular question, let's pretend, let's make up a scenario. Let's pretend in my question, the listener moves towards the source. So pretend you're at a party, the source is a speaker, and you are running towards the speaker. You are the listener. So how I use this diagram is I say, okay, cool. The listener is moving. Which way is the listener moving? Towards the source. So literally take your finger, put it on listener. Then say, which way are we moving? We're moving to the right. We're moving towards the source. So where you see velocity of the listener, that's where you put a plus. Where you see velocity of the listener, that is where you put a plus. So when you substitute into your formula, it'll look like this. You will put your sub in v your value for v which will be like 340 okay v is 340 then the listener is moving and we said the listener here is moving towards the source which is plus according to my diagram so we will say plus vl velocity of the listener whatever that number is and then because you put a plus at the top at the bottom you will put a minus and the source will be stationary so velocity of source will be zero Okay, and then you'll fill in frequency of the source, whatever that is. Let's try a different scenario. What if the listener moved away from the source? So if the listener moves away, so start at the listener, put your finger on listener. We are now going to move away from the source. So away from the source is this way. The source is down there. We don't want to move this way because I would be moving towards the source. We want to move away from the source. We want to move that way. So which way am I pointing? I'm pointing that way, to the left. And look at my diagram. What points to the left? Minus. So, because we're saying the listener is moving away from the source, here's the listener, it's moving away from the source, that's a minus. So, you'll fill in, you'll fill in your V, which again is 340 or whatever the question tells you. Velocity of the listener is now going to be minus, okay? And then you carry on filling in the rest of your equation as is. If you don't like using this diagram and you prefer to learn it manually, here is another way that you can remember your signs. So, for example, if the listener is moving towards the source, then velocity of the listener will be plus. So, if the listener moves, it's always going to be velocity of the listener that gets the sign. If the source moves, it's going to be velocity of the source that gets the sign. Let's do an example. In this question, it says, an ambulance siren emits waves at a frequency of 250 hertz. Determine the frequency of the sound heard by stationary observer. Remember, another word for observer is listener. So in this case, the ambulance is the source. So I always recommend writing down what we know. What this question should be giving us, which it isn't, is V, the speed of sound in air. Let's take that as 340 meters per second. They should really give that to you in the question. So we know the frequency of the source is 250 hertz. As I mentioned, V is 340. The they say the source is moving towards the listener at 25 meters per second. So the source is moving. So it's the velocity of the source is 25 meters per second. And remember what I told you, if the source is moving, the listener is not moving, is stationary. 
That's it, let's see. So when we substitute into our formula, we are looking for the frequency of the sound heard by the stationary observer or the listener. So we're looking for FL. When you do the sum, you have to write down your formula as it appears exactly on the formula sheet. And where some of my grade 12s go wrong is they leave out the plus minus. You have to write the plus minus when you are writing the blank formula down. You have to, have to, have to write the plus minus. Then when we put numbers in, that is when we choose a plus or a minus. So FL is what I'm looking for. V is 340, so we're going to have 340 at the top and 340 at the bottom. Now, according to my diagram, remember listener, source, that way is plus, this way is minus. Who is moving in this example? The source is moving towards the listener. So here's the source. The source is going to go this way towards the listener. So we are going to put a minus by VS. Why does the minus go by VS? Because the source is moving. The source is moving towards the listener, which according to my diagram is a minus. Or as I said, you can memorize it. Source towards listener is a minus. So it depends on what you prefer if you want to memorize it or use the diagram. And remember, the source is moving with a velocity of 25. We can fill that in. The listener is stationary. So the listener's velocity is zero. If you use a minus at the bottom, we're going to use a plus at the top. It's always opposite. And then the frequency of the source is 250. 250. All you need to do for me now is type this exactly as you see it on your calculator and you get your answer to two decimal places. Don't forget your unit. I hope that that was helpful. In other videos in this playlist, we will look at more complicated examples, exam examples, and more. We'll take a closer look at the applications of the Doppler effect. I'll see you then. Bye, everyone. Subscribe if you haven't yet.